Our full-size catapult is going to look a lot like the popsicle stick version. We start with a four-sided frame and add some legs on the bottom. Our spoon is going to be replaced by a long throwing arm with a basket on the end. Then we need a really strong cross brace at the top to stop the arm. Just like in the small version, using a triangle shape is the best because triangles are very strong. Finally, we need something to wind around and around, which is going to give us our elastic force. Instead of elastics, we're going to be using rope for our catapult because rope has just the right amount of elasticity. But unlike medieval times, we're going to be catapulting pumpkins. OK, we have built a catapult. Check it out. It's pretty solid, and I think it's pretty amazing. And just like in the small catapult, we have our elastic force. But this time, we're using rope. Right, Zach? Yes. OK, and rope will work as well as the elastic did in the small one? Yeah. All right, great. So what do we do? It's really well, we loose need, now. We need to wind this up so oh that we God. put some okay, tension into it. it. Go! The reason a catapult works is because the rope is twisted. The elasticity in the rope wants to unwind, which gives the catapult its power. Just like the small wind catapult, it. the like more that. you wind it, the better it works. Good. OK, ready? One, two, three! <laughs> It didn't work that well. No, it um, that well. Yeah, so we'll it went, and it flew, and it landed here, which is a little farther yeah, away from the wall than I'd short. like it to be. One third of the way to the wall! Now Zach and I are planning to outfit the catapult with a sling. The sling attaches to the end of the throwing arm and gives the pumpkin a lot more distance to travel. Because the pumpkin is traveling a longer distance in the same amount of time, it will be going faster, which will hopefully get it to the wall, or at least a lot farther than before. So we built this sling. How does this work, Zach? Well, we've got one end tied here. Yeah. And then we put the pumpkin in here. Wait, wait. OK, pulling arm down. Pulling arm down. <sighs> OK, yeah, now what? Now we put the pumpkin in here. Put the pumpkin in there. Yeah. And then we loop this over the back of the, oh. over that. As the throwing arm goes up, this will slide off the back of the throwing arm and it will release the pumpkin. All right, you're the expert, I believe you. Let's try it out. Three, two, one. Oh. Whoa! OK, that Better. works really well. You know what the problem is, though? We still don't have enough oomph. Zach's idea is to attach a bunch of surgical tubing to the cross piece of the catapult. Surgical tubing is pretty much big elastics, so we'll have two places we're getting elastic force from, the rope and the surgical tubing. Hopefully this design is enough to help our catapult fling a pumpkin far enough to hit the castle wall. Pumpkin! Pumpkin? Loading arm? Loading arm. Dude. All right, you ready? You think it's going to work? We've got we've done every modification we can possibly do. So you think it's going to work this we time? We did it. It's going to work. OK, here we go. I'm excited. All right, ready? Ready. One, two, three. Whoa! Yeah! <laughs> Woohoo! High fives! Well, there you have it. Awesome job. Now we need to throw fingers to see who gets to rebuild the castle. OK? One, two, three. Oh, thanks very much for joining us. Let's just take a break. I'll rebuild the castle. <laughs> yeah! My name is Phil, and I take your everyday science experiments and do them big. This is Science Max Experiments at Arch. <laughs>